Cancers, welcome. This is an Astro Tarot Fusion read for the end of 2021. Love, romance, and relationship. What I have is the major arcanas set up here with the planets, eight planets and two orbs, sun and moon. We have ten cards up top, and then below we have the signs that they're in. So really what I have is a transit map of the sky with tarot cards here. This is not, mm, is, I don't know if it looks complicated or not, but it's not. But I think it, it gives a good idea kind of what's going on uh, when you just kind of look at the cards together. Now later, I'll actually pull minor a card huh, to kind of represent our energy here. Here's the planets. And I'll actually do like a tarot reading to go with this and see what we get from that and I separated even the court card so we could take a court card to actually mean a person this time when we do that but just to go through here you have uh, Mars being represented by the tower in tarot and also we have a bowl and we had a bowl earlier in the week and then the moon sort of formed what's called a ladle in astrology um, and at every point, it's like you could look at that moon and some of those readings I did uh, it, it giving you some kind of leverage, you know, different ways to deal with that energy that's in the bowl. And I always think of the bowl, yeah, you know, for you, you know, I'm talking primarily to a Cancer rising, sun, moon, uh, Venus as well. But with Cancer rising, we know the houses. Um, we, we know that the you have right now Venus and Pluto, and right now you also have Mercury uh, conjunct in Capricorn. We know that's your seventh house, so that's a big deal. Um, so that's how I'm just being able to get a handle on this with the houses. And I got a feeling I should say with Mars right now, um, represented here by Temperance, the Sagittarius card. I'm a Sagittarius. It's kind of the energy of fucking off a little bit. And uh, if you kind of see Mars in the chart, it's, it's in conjunct to Uranus right now. Um, it's sextile to Saturn. So I think there's an opportunity for us to take some kind of action. Um, but I think this is kind of the energy, like this is a good time to, you know, have a New Year's party to relax, to, you know, I'm kind of, Mm, like uh, Terrence McKenna said, you know, I don't want to recommend sex, drugs, and rock and roll to anyone, but it worked for me. So it could be a good time, I mean, to really kind of unwind, you know. I know it's been hard as fuck, you know. And perhaps that's, you know, what's necessary here. But with the moon uh, is in... The first degree, as I do this reading of Scorpio now, represent by the death card. The moon is the high priestess. So now that's the, that's the coming around. Now it's the bottom of the bowl. And you have Uranus cutting through the chart in your 11th house. Um, but it's home by house for you. That's helpful since it's already a fall in Taurus. You know, Taurus just... Solid Earth wants to stay the same. Uranus kind of anything but Uranus is like knock over the sacred icons. Here you kind of see that the Fool is Uranus, and then the Hierophant represents Taurus. And you know the last thing the the Fool just wants to just go kick over the sacred uh, icons. Uh, it it wants to have the you know, lightning bolts come down and uh, change and. Um, it just sort of doesn't care really at all. I mean, it's almost against sort of structure, you know, so the hair bond, and of course it's square Saturn, so that's what's going on there. And for you, that square, which is monumental, representing the whole year, um, is Aquarius, which is your eighth house. And I can't even imagine um, how that could be shaken out for you with the... Your Uranus be in your eleventh house. Hmm. We'll look at that again when I do the tarot reading. That might give us some insight. Um, Jupiter, uh, we have also is in Aquarius, represented by the star. 
it's at 29 degrees. When you got the world and the star and Jupiter all together, you just sort of look at those as cards. I mean, that really kind of gives you the picture here. Um, uh, to me, there's some great energy coming out of this transit. It's been a year with Jupiter, whatever you've been going through. And it's just about to release itself from that. Saturn will be there for a long time to come, a year or more, you know, and it's doing its work there in Aquarius in your your eighth house, guys. Um, and really, this square doesn't totally go away. It's just right now, it's maybe something you have to deal with. Um, it, it's funny because Venus and Pluto, that the whole theme there... And happening at 25 degrees, it's not that far from the cusp of your 8th house. It's also bringing in that 8th house energy. So you could have Uranus coming in here and bringing in major changes um, to your relationships of all kinds. Even like the way you conduct your relationships. You know, the transformation with you. And Venus also is what you value. And the seventh house, you know, puts that emphasis on people. So, it's already been kind of this energy anyway. But for you, if you're a Cancer rising, particularly, um, it would really put the pressure to really look uh, deeply at the shadow stuff that's going on in terms of your relationships. Um, so, it would mean going into the basement. It would mean looking up under the rug. It's the Scorpio energy, the Pluto energy. It's dragging Venus, who just is, you know, Libra and uh, Taurus, and it just wants the beauty and harmony. And that's all, you know? It really, it's all Venus really wants. And right now, Pluto's just really insisting, no, look, look under this rug. Just look at this disgusting stuff. And, and that's... It could have been something that's going on definitely for months now. Um, it's been hitting. Um, but that could be part of what's going on just with Pluto in your uh, seventh house. It's been there since, like, forever. I don't know when it, it I hit Capricorn, but, I mean, it's been, God, I don't know, 15 years. I mean, most of, you know, uh, I should know that, but I don't. Um, I know it, it won't go out till 2020 four really leave um so we're still looking at more time in capricorn for you um luckily everything else will clear out of there and we all move away from that but the big deal too with uh with capricorn is right now and tomorrow especially you've got mercury and venus now conjunct on top of, of um, the pluto here so this should be, with Mercury, something coming in uh, in terms of an uh, uh, idea of what's going on for you with this um, energy of Pluto-Venus, which is that shadow stuff. Uh, Venus, of course, a woman. Venus can be the sister. Uh, Venus can be the wife. Venus can be the lover. Um, and if it, it could even be something going on at work, too. Uh, seven house gets it can be that particularly if you love your work uh, this kind of energy um, it can be finding out dark stuff uh, in about a relationship you know um, discovering something dark about yourself a dark pattern that you didn't see before particularly today with the uh, mercury there uh, remember we haven't done the tarot reading yet so we'll get to that and we'll, we'll see what Clara uh, tarot has to say to kind of uh expand this a little bit um i don't know where your planets are but we do know that this is your eighth house here so um when we look at neptune and the moon too uh, this is going on for you in your ninth house uh, energy and that's um belief systems you know normally it's sagittarius over here with the temperance um, also, um, and just went direct to not that long ago. So there's been a real recently in the last two weeks, and I think a pretty strong feeling of, uh, the rose colored glasses getting 
torn off of that reality check coming in um it just things becoming like suddenly real any any inkling of illusions or delusions which is neptunian uh, realm um get just slapped away it could have been kind of brutal and that would be around that belief system energy in your ninth house i think belief systems too are personal belief systems you know I'm not being good enough, I'm not, whatever it is that we believe can be thrown in there too. Or the other way, I believe I'm infallible and I never make a mistake. That's a belief system, kind of a fixed belief system. But uh, something going on there. Um, Mars is kind of is square right now to Uranus, starting to square um, to Neptune, I mean. And it's in conjunct Uranus, and it just seems to me like a bit, this is a bit of a time out, like, this is a perfect time just to kind of do nothing, I tell you. I mean, you know, it's always something being done. Uh, do uh, do the Zen nothing, rather than the nothing nothing, um, and get something out of it that way. But let me add some tarot cards here, and see what I can get, um, using the minor arcana to clarify the signs i'm pretty shuffled ten of pentacles that's I, I gotta tell you cancer with the ten of pentacles being the card on temperance here um i even more gotta go with the chill vibe it's like stop and think about it for a second you know the coffee pot's not on and you don't have to worry about it and the bills are paid and everything's kind of okay right and you're cool and you're solid, and you know, so you it really wouldn't hurt when you're in this kind of position, you know, to kick back and relax. I mean, it's still holidays. Wow. Um, and then I made two more than one. Let me clarify the Capricorn energy with the Ace of Wands. <laughs> I gotta say, with the Ace of Wands showing up, um, out of all of this, there's some kind of passion coming. I, I hate to go the cautionary route, looking at the end of the year energy, so I'm trying not to be too specific, but um, with the Pluto and Venus, it's kind of like Venus being taken into hell. With the shadow work that's healthy and etc., it's also dark uh, stuff that's not, because Pluto represents um, the many dark things, you know, um, including like, uh, you know, terrible death and everything. Um, so be careful with like uh, hookups, but this to me shows that some kind of energy is coming out of this into the seventh house. It's got to be like a relationship. So, and I mean, if it's not a relationship, then it's a fantastic job offer that gets you very excited. If it's a relationship, it's also one that gets you very excited. It's something coming in like with a lot of passion here. Let me see what we get for Aquarius, the Five of Pentacles. I don't know. Jupiter's leaving. I might be leaving you with a sense of loss. Um, leaving Aquarius. And it kind of bringing up whatever's been going on through the whole year through this eighth house energy that you have Saturn in. And that's what's been square in um, Uranus. Mm. It could have been like through this process of kind of examining your belief system and your values. You found yourself kind of lacking or you found like you didn't have enough somehow. Um, you weren't up to snuff. Let me see. If I'm going to pull a... Here I'm going to pull a court card because I feel like there's some kind of influence going on here. So this would show most likely a fire sign energy. Uh, could mostly be a Leo, but Aries or Sag. Um, sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. I'm coming in, and this would be during this year and influencing you here. And it's, it's like in some way either they're making you feel uh, diminutive somehow or discounted somehow, or you just you're comparing yourself to them. And it somehow brings in some, this uh, energy of not feeling good enough, you know, not being good enough. And, and you know, I, I wonder if it isn't some kind of comparison, either like a, a literal, like in your mind, literally thinking like, holy shit, I'm not as good as them. 
or just their energy being around you and really pointing out to you that because this would be someone who's very full of vitality and confidence and kind of robust and outgoing, you know, and maybe you're looking at that and you're like, you know, I want to have that, but I don't, you know, that could be a lover, right? Ten of, of, wow, ten of wands. This is for your moon card. You know, I always think too, when you look at this together, this reading, uh, Neptune and represented uh, by the moon in Pisces and the moon always represents something hidden and something hidden from ourselves to me um, that we don't see because we don't we don't get that part of ourselves it's the kind of thing oftentimes our friends or spouse might know it well and be able to put their finger right on it and we'll be like what no so it's interesting with Neptune also being what's unseen and unreal and so much gets missed with Neptune. The transits are, can be so subtle. You know, it's not a direct link like with the Saturn transit. Um, but this shows some kind of like uh, you've had enough. I think like this might have been kind of hard for you. Um, going through this energy of sort of examining your belief systems and your values and trying to uh, put it together. And maybe even somehow, somehow not feeling good enough about it, you know. Um, twice kind of looking at that. Twice with fire energy. So maybe you've been kind of down and your energy's been down. And so when you see fire energy, it's like a little bit of envy. Nothing wrong. You know, what, what's really good is this, this Ace of Wands here and Capricorn. I mean, that could be the fire coming back to you. And if you look at it this way, if you're drawing in fire energy, friends, lovers, fire energy, you're expressing that. It's just, it's like the universe is saying, look, I'm coming. I'm bringing the fire. Cancer uprisings. I'm bringing the fire. It's coming. Now let's look at Uranus. Oh, my God. Three of swords. So the chances are... <laughs> It, this is the Herbant card here. Again, this is something that wants to be stable, and Uranus is going to bring that disruption. We very well could have had a major ending this year. All right, this could be uh, in the eleven towns could be a friendship. You know, it could be an association, strong association. This could be a job relationship too. Uh, but this would be something brought to an end. You just kind of look at the bright side. Uranus is uh, usually. It wants to set you free. It wants to, to be freer. Um, let me clarify that with the court card, too. I think we're going to be on you know, the person that's involved. So, Cancer Rises, we'd be looking at an air sign here, a person. Possibly someone a little younger than you. Um, someone that came in fast. Um, it, it's not, if it was a page, I'd say, you know, they just sent you like a message that broke your heart. But no, this is someone like, it could be pretty thoroughly like broken your heart. Uh, you know, you had expectations for them. You thought they were being honest and straightforward. And I think you found out um, that they weren't. So I guess I would consider if, you, if you're good with it, it's, I think that's kind of what this year is for, particularly with that seventh house energy again is like just kind of like uh consider yourself like the coach of a football team and you're uh there with that pluto in the seven thousand venus um you're just you've got these you're going through the roster and you're saying what about jones cut what about murphy keep them what about so and so cut <laughs> you know um and that's can be kind of harsh now particularly with the moon now in pisces uh, with the high priestess representing uh, the moon and Scorpio here, uh, the next few days, it's just starting, probably if you're listening to this reading, near the time it's posted, it's going to be in one or two degrees of uh, Scorpio, um, so that's going to be opposite Uranus, and that's going to be squaring the um, energy uh, of Pluto, or a minute here longer, just, just got off of that, so, you know, you might be really uh, feeling it now, it's like, this could be bringing some kind of change home, like just about now. I mean, it is intense energy. I mean, tomorrow's the exact square of Uranus. 
Saturn the 29th. It's exactly Jupiter goes into uh, Pisces tomorrow, right at the same time. I mean, that's like a godsend, you know. Um, it, it, it could be a little tough today, too, with 29 degree uh, Jupiter on you guys. Let me see what I get for the moon energy. Two of cups. Wow. This could be self-love. It's a little corny, but, you know, it's like through all of this and with the Scorpio moon, it's got a bad rap. You know, oh, the moon's at fall in Scorpio, but it's the perfect energy that's needed right now for Pluto Venus. So, <coughs> excuse me, first of all, with the moon being emotions, we have to go down in the basement. We have to look under the rug with this Venus-Pluto conjunction. And now with the moon, for a couple days here, we might be able to do it. You know, that gives us just the oomph we need to go and take a look down in there. And this is the funny thing. I think this is where you find your either you find either your person or you find like this love of yourself, this connection with yourself. It's something really solid though. Um you know, I think of something I was told um, by a voice in my head. <laughs> Go inside and find the darkest, scariest door you can possibly find down in the darkest, scariest corner of the basement and then open that damn door because that's going to be the way through <laughs> to what you want. Um, so that's totally counterintuitive, you know. Um, right? And also the moon and a Scorpio can just make us a little more comfortable in dealing with our shadow stuff, whatever it might be. So let me know what you think of this, guys. Do you have any questions about the, your own transit? Uh, give me a comment. And I'll try to uh, answer it if I can. And um, do like. That helps a lot. And please do subscribe if you haven't. Thank you.